it's funny how the dollar is not having the type of impact it was having during this period here on commodities, especially gold, silver. And yesterday was a good example because for me, the dollar had lost, kind of lost support. And look at this, you know, totally re reversed strongly back into this, what I consider now descending resistance. So we should go sideways and maybe roll back over. Let's see. Me, I, I like these types of trend lines to break out of them. So hopefully the dollar doesn't break out of it. Although, to be honest, the dollar has lost having the impact that it that it used to have, you know. Yesterday we went up strong. Gold and silver did not move inversely to the dollar, as far as I could tell. Not really. Uh, and we look at some of the other commodities, it was as if it didn't really matter. And certainly, even if it did have an impact, certainly not the type of impact it had during this massive rise. So that's good. And in fact, if that's the case, I wouldn't mind the dollar going up, go up since we don't care. That way, if later it starts to matter, you've got a, a higher place to fall from. But honestly, at the moment, the dollar not really having much impact. So anyway, commodities, <laughs> copper, look at this. Again, the dollar was very strong and copper went up anyway. So there's a bit of proof and the markets were a little bit green. So I think overall at the moment, if it's between the markets and the dollar, Copper is following the markets. Markets were slightly green, so up we go. Nothing crazy. Remember, we're coming from absolute support here, 355. I do expect it to run into a tiny bit of resistance. It should at least. We may get there today, 367, 368. It's very, very miniature resistance. But, you know, this, again, the descending is something you can break out from. And if it does break out, then maybe high 380s, you know, 39 it's kind of an area where you find resistance for it. It's not really cracked for in, in months. So forget four for now. But yeah, copper looks okay for a little bit of a move higher. And who knows if we close above this descending, we could rise a bit more. But I think it needs the markets to go up for that. And markets, they could bounce a bit. They've come down quite a bit. But I think they're going to roll over. Medium term markets for me are, are going to roll over. Natural gas, you know, it curled nice. I did think it was supposed to continue this breakout and maybe go up to the fall zone, maybe even gap fill, maybe even go higher, but let's just take it one step at a time. So the first step is to get back to this 3.5 zone, close above it and, and rush to four. So here you can see I've added this little descending. We've touched that today. It's all about today. You know, let's, let's go further. Let's, let's go to 3.35, 3.4. Let's go to that zone. And then we're one day away from the 3.5 which would be very, very important to continue this breakout. But for me, natural gas should continue the breakout. We spent months sideways teasing bulls and bears, finally broke out, nice continuation, nice normal retracement. Let's go back up and, and, and continue. So natural gas still looks good for a move higher. And I think natural gas doesn't really care about, you know, market moves, the dollar, it's got its own local thing going on. Maybe geopolitics a little bit, but really it's it's independent from everything. It's probably the most independent asset commodity that i that i analyze oil for me this was a bit surprising this okay continuation of the drop yesterday not as surprising as this move here i thought we would continue higher <laughs> but yeah look you know we've come back down and yesterday's move is just i mean this was a weak candle anyway on monday so the tuesday candle go back here not as surprising i think now we just sort of we need to come back down here stabilize and see if we can make another move higher but this type of pattern really for me, I feel like it wants to go even lower. You know, it's not, imagine in a couple of trading days, even if we do go down here and stabilize, it will take some time to mount an offensive back up here. It almost needs news. And we've already had a lot of bullish news. So if it's not going up on what's currently going on, it's almost like it wants to come down. Um, I'm not too sure about oil. I think it needs to go a bit lower at least, you know, low 82s. 83, 82, and then, and again, the, does the dollar have an impact? I'm not really sure, maybe not really. It's just probably geopolitics. Maybe the, the war is not getting as bad as it thought, you know, if the war's not that bad, then down goes oil. But I thought gold would do the same thing, and gold is, has been holding up better than oil. Gold is, well, I don't know if, which one's the safety trade more, but I thought they were sort of both operating together but there was a little divergence there so anyway oil maybe low 82 83 and then there's a small bounce but maybe it needs to go lower to then have a stronger bounce a bounce strong enough to take us back to the basically 95 
So a um, bit of weakness there in oil. <laughs> Uranium, pretty good. Very bullish, I would say. 2.3% is nice. What you need is that little close up of all these little tails here. You know, 26.5. You just need that 26.5 close. And then you can basically rush to 28 slash 28.5 and retest this high. And if you do that, I mean, it's the perfect chart. You know, imagine you're up here, then there's a small retracement, you know, cup and handle, and then bam, up to 31.5. And those miners, those uranium miners will love it. So, and the markets were green yesterday, so maybe that helps. What happens if the markets collapse? Do we go back down here? Are we range bound until the markets really pump for several days to allow uranium to retest this zone? I don't know. Obviously, I would love a collapse because I'm not in it, but... um. It's it's so outperforming the markets. It's it's the best. I don't know if it's the best commodity. Uh, you know, some of them have done very well. Oil's done very well, but uranium really, the uranium miners have done amazingly. And I, honestly, this is a potential for a continuation. Let's close above twenty six point five, rush to twenty eight, some sideways consolidation, cup and handle, and then move up. Otherwise, the only thing that can take it down, in my opinion, is a market collapse goes down here. Then the market really starts to collapse, and then we start to go a bit lower. And we should find support on every support um, trend line that I have. I think there'll be a bit of support. And what a buy the dip candidate that would be. All right, gold and silver. So gold, you know, I did say we'd probably test 1950. I think yesterday counts. 1953, 54, that's the same as 1950. So was that it? Was that it? A blip? Um, and that's with the dollar going up, by the way. So you can see how the dollar didn't really matter that much because it closed at high of day and gold kind of did too. So that's just from the daily uh, candle, you can tell that the dollar didn't really have that much of an impact, at least as much as it used to. But now what happens, we go sideways and then break out, because if we break out, we're talking about a quadruple top absolute guaranteed breakout. And then, you know, does 2000, 2050 become support rather than resistance? That's the absolute mother of all historical moves in gold that we could be, you know, days, weeks away from? Or do we just go sideways, not break out, and then drift lower as maybe the war subsides, the, the ground invasion doesn't happen, peace talks work, um, maybe the dollar starts to have an impact and that climbs, or maybe the market bounces and golds uh, move up, just sort of fades. There are many dynamics. Overall gold, medium and long-term, incredibly bullish, Short term, neutral. I, I'm just going to watch this. But for me, 1950 remains support. If we lose that, then we retest the descending. And on the way up, it's really 1985, close above that. And we're talking about, I don't even think 2000 matters. I think it goes straight to 2020. But, you know, yesterday's move was very, very, not very, very bullish, but it was bullish and constructive. And just, yeah, just keep watching, keep watching what happens. Let's look at silver real quick. So that was good too. You know, I'm starting to think that this ascending trend line is becoming relevant again. <laughs> if you remember one of the one of the latest videos, I said I, I'm not sure whether it's time to delete it, but it's just that yesterday's move it bounced off it. It could just be a total lucky coincidence, but for now I'll keep it. I prefer if I could delete it, then it's just a clearer chart. I like you know cleanliness, but at the moment it could still count. And then if we start to go back up with gold, then obviously. The equivalent of a 1985 close above for gold in silver would be like a 23.8, let's say, you know, close above there and bam. Um, or maybe that's actually the 2000 zone. I don't know, but I really expect silver to catch up once we start to move in gold. It really, really should. And on the way down, you can see all the support zones I've got. So, you know, gold and silver, let's just see sideways. Yesterday was slightly bullish. It was good to see early support. Um, and then, of course, the miners. I'm not going to go too much in the miners, but you can see it's the same thing. Nice support there on the horizontal on GDXJ. Absolutely what I was hoping for, actually. Um, just sideways, let's just see. You know, let's just break out and see GDX. Same sort of chart pattern. Nice support. Yesterday's move was also good. So there you go. Let's see what happens. Good luck, everybody.